I'm Tom from Continuity, and this is the Vintage News. On today's episode, we talk about rag houses, the elusive spot to pick and find vintage clothing. We also cover the rise of the running shoe and how functional footwear is beginning to take over the sneaker world. Finally, we touch on a few Instagram Live, yes, Instagram Live shows that you should be paying attention to. Make sure to follow and subscribe from another on YouTube by clicking the button below. Now, let's get into it. <laughs> Rag houses have been the grail destination for vintage sellers for as long as we can remember. If you're not familiar, rag houses are like giant warehouses full of used clothing. Typically, these garments are donations from places like the Kidney Foundation or the Salvation Army, or just leftovers from thrift stores that either weren't good enough to sell on the floor or were on the floor and decided to go move on to another location. These rag houses then take those products, either bail them and sell them to third world countries, or cut them up to use them as rag in industrial settings. Most vintage sellers froth at the mouth at the idea of getting into a rag house to go and pick. Why you might ask? Well imagine a giant warehouse that's like a thrift store and you are the only one that gets to go and search through everything. Sounds a little appealing if you ask me. But like most things, no two rag houses are exactly the same. Some rag houses allow pickers to come through and some are very strict on allowing no outside personnel into the building. Those locations mainly focus on rebailing and selling them to third world countries just to keep things moving along as an unpaid picked bale is worth more to people if you want to ship it overseas. The ones that do allow pickers offer a wide variety of different options for people. Some will actually pre-pick it with their own staff and allow you to come and wholesale from them. You can sort through bins of Carhartts, Levi's, sweatshirts, t-shirts, anything really depending on how they deem to organize it. Other places allow you to pick the raw bales and you're actually cutting them open and exposing the donations themselves. This way it can be very lucrative, but it can also be very hard to find good items. Other places allow you to sort of pick through as they are sorting through everything with their own staff. A lot of these locations have what they call lines, which are kind of like a assembly line where you can sort of pick off the belt that seems to be running through. Now it's very difficult to get into these spaces, but that is changing with the help of a few Silicon Valley tech bros. Fleek is a new app that was created by Abby Aurora and Sankit Agarwal. If you aren't familiar, Fleek connects raghouse suppliers with vintage buyers. Now there's a bevy of ways in which you can use the app. Some raghouses join and will post videos of bundles that they have available for sale. You can watch the video, see what they're charging, and decide if it's good enough for you. Other rag houses will allow video conferencing. In this style, you'll do a one-on-one -on -one call with a rag house and decide what you want to pick from what they have available. This can be very tedious from experience, but it's well worth it. You'll pay near thrift store prices and it just gets delivered straight to your door. And even if you're looking for something specific, Fleek allows you to message their team and they'll tell you which rag house supplier that you can talk to in order to get those items. While this is a breakthrough in the rag house mystery, there are only a limited number of rag houses that have signed up so far, and there's literally thousands of rag houses across the world. Also, not to boast, but we feel that vintage pickers are a little bit better at picking the items that they want to sell rather than the rag house employees. I mean, here at the Vintage News, we have over five years of buying and selling vintage, so our eyes are a little more keen than the average rag house worker. Now, we want to see personally what you can find at a rag house, so we've actually connected with a rag house owner, and we'll be going live from the rag house to pick and interview the rag house owner on what it's like owning and running a rag house. So if you have any questions, make sure to comment them below and we'll make sure to include them. Today's episode is brought to you by From Another. From Another is Alberta's premier spot for buying vintage, sneakers, and streetwear, both in-store and online at fromanother.ca. If you're looking to expand your wardrobe but don't want to break the bank, From Another has an extensive collection of new and used items that you can purchase. From Another also ships worldwide and express, so if you're impatient like me, you can get your order right away. Use the code VINTAGENEWS at checkout for free shipping. That's code VINTAGENEWS for free shipping at fromanother.ca. Now back to the show. On another note, the sneaker market has been making some radical changes lately. With summer just around the corner, most people are putting away their winter boots and deciding to go with something a bit more stylish and comfortable, aka the sneaker. While last year saw the rise of the Panda Dunk and it was literally everywhere, this year is a little bit different. The running shoe seems to be the cool style this summer. Now based on market trends, other shoes like the Jordan 1 Lucky Green or the Nike Dunk Sashiko are not selling nearly as well as they would have a year ago. Meanwhile, shoes like the Action Bronze and New Balance 990 V6 is shooting up in price and it's hard to find a pair that you can wear. 
other shoes like the Nike Vomero are actually becoming very difficult to find and are probably going to hit the resale market pretty soon. Women are usually trendsetters in terms of fashion items and if you take a look at the most popular women's wear website, that would be aritzia.com, their footwear section is absolutely chock full of running shoes. Just take a look. You can see shoes like Asics, Sullivan, and New Balance prominently featured on the front of their page. Now, I'm all for this trend. As an older man, I find that it's hard to find shoes that are comfortable. And running shoes happen to be very comfortable, so I'm going to stick with it for this summer at least. But I'm sure the diehard sneakerheads are going to continue to wear the shoes that they want to. And the good items are still going to be very hard to get. Finally, live selling has not died on Instagram just quite yet. If you haven't noticed, Chris from 1980-something Co. is still continuing to go live with the virtual flea, but now in conjunction with the people's flea. On another note, we have seen new trends and styles emerging on Instagram Live. Namely, Unfaded Nostalgia has begun a new series called the Reverse Blind Bid. In this format, the host views three bidders' $1,000 bundles, and the people watching get to decide which one he purchases. Then, after a live payment goes through, the items that were purchased then get resold to the audience in an auction-style bid, starting at $1 a piece. It is pretty entertaining to watch Chris stress as he hopes that the bundles will reach over $1,000 and he doesn't lose money. But as far as we've seen, he's been pretty profitable most of the time. This makes for an entertaining show, and even if you don't want to buy anything, it is still a good watch. That's all for this week's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the From Another YouTube channel so you don't miss the next one. And also make sure to check out our newest series, Thrifting with Chief a vlog with our staff member Tony as he walks you through his day-to-day -day with food reviews, thrifting, and some stuff around the shop. And as always, if you have stories that you think we should be covering on the Vintage News, make sure to message me directly on Instagram, at Continuity. This is Tom signing off, and thanks for watching.